By the way, when you see a glint in my eye, it's because I'm using a light to make myself look more pretty. <laughs> right, flat earthers, listen up. As you'll see in the title, flat earthers have been hypnotised. And hypnotism is being employed and I've actually found myself a victim of this as well. Every time someone mentions the word Arab, I seem to switch off. On the news particularly, and maybe there's two words, but... And I may have de-hypnotised myself by recognising it. Um, and I think that's probably all you have to do. But I have to wait and see. <laughs> Catch myself doing it again. And you may have switched off then, because we may have all been hypnotised with this Arab word. So if you found out you just had drifted off then for a few seconds, uh, go back, <laughs> watch it again, <coughs> listen again. Maybe you've been hypnotised. And I think that's what's happening with these flat earthers. I'm sorry to say, but keep asking the same questions. And I think you must be hypnotised so that you're not hearing your, your own logic on, on the matter and anyone else who explains it to you. And just keep bringing up sort of the, the same questions. And then, you know, and also why bring the moon landing into it? You know, what's that got to do with the flat earth? Because uh, that is true, that the moon landing did not happen. You know, they, they can't get outside the Van Allen belt and survive. They can send unmanned things out. It's not like the whole space isn't true. You know, you suddenly start thinking that planets are just shimmering nothings. I mean, it's a, it's a reflection of how you know, in this modern times, we do not go outside and look at the stars. You know, mainly because of light pollution and obviously entertainment within the house. So, and there seems to be some sort of fear, and that could have been done in the hypnotism. Now, when the flat earth started coming out, I was wary about this. And I've said it in videos. And I started watching some of these videos. And they started off, you know, just with some, you know, a lot of flashing. Like there was this one I watched where the first however many minutes, I didn't carry on watching it more than five minutes, was of this propeller. You know, so the propeller was flashing. And you always got to be wary, I think, when stuff like that's going on because it's putting you in a different sort of state and they can then slip in some things you know I don't know how clever they are I did discuss this but it seems to be apparent to me that if people uh, keep asking the same questions you know a few months later again asking the same questions you gotta be wondering is something fishy going on um, I don't think it can just be the fluoridated brains <laughs> because if their brains weren't working properly they wouldn't be able to do their jobs and things like that. These aren't stupid people, these are you know, intelligent people with, with the full capacities of their brains so there just seems to be these these elements of it which they can't get around so they keep thinking or oh, the earth is flat and then it's you know sets them off on whatever journey that takes you on believing that I mean I kind of you know I find I found on myself getting a bit close to it like thinking yeah what if is it what if it is flat and you know there aren't planets out there and those aren't stars they're just pinpricks and you know God is just outside the the glass bowl covering it, you know, and then I like, oh yeah, okay, 
<laughs> what the? <laughs> yeah. But if believing the earth is flat in a snow globe helps you in some way, makes you feel closer to God possibly, helps you wake up to the fact that the you know we have been lied to about stuff and this stuff is being covered up there is something with the moon on the far side of the moon which I've said before and I'll say again now quickly just um, that uh, before God made this latest version of humanoid species <laughs> started with Adam and Eve 6,000 years ago God had made some other humanoids that God would inhabit for multiple purposes but they're the ones who built the pyramids they had this advanced technology and they I feel have been observing us observing us from the moon and have a moon base on the far side of the moon and there's, we've seen pictures of moon bases on the far side of the moon and we've also had rumours that uh, the Americans dropped a nuke on a moon base in 2009 in October and my theory is that they're there to observe and prevent us from overreaching our remit and our remit is the earth God gave us the earth God didn't give us the moon or Mars and I believe they will prevent us from taking anything away from the moon or Mars or asteroids and prevent us from settling on other planets even if that were possible Right, so that's that out the way. So a couple of the questions that came up on the Flat Earth. Let's go through them. They say, oh, why don't we see any pictures from space then? Okay, so recently we have, with the Tesla launch. And going further back, when Google Maps first came out, we were getting satellite pictures from space but that quickly sort of got wrapped up um, and I guess countries may well have a problem with other countries flying satellites over their lands and taking pictures because it became possible to get some sort of decent definition so that is an answer to that question. I maybe it isn't the, the, the best answer, a brilliant answer, but I do think you know if you did watch the four hours of footage on the SpaceX channel YouTube, not any other channel, they've got videos about four hours of footage of the full launch and the Tesla car in space. And um, I've done a video on a very interesting bit when it was just looking out into space in the dark. Very interesting what was seen there. There was no moon in it at all. And I believe that was probably under orders. You also only saw the continent of Australia. That could well have been also under orders. Um, so, that's that question. Um... You know, you ask them how does that, you know, because an obvious question has been coming up now, you know, well, what about sunset and sunrise? What's, what's, what's going on with that? And they say, oh, it's perspective. So they say, you know, I've seen this one video of this guy claiming that the sun is smaller when it's rising. Now, I think, please, all of us on this planet have observed the sun being low in the sky the sun being high in the sky 
the moon being low in the sky and being high in the sky. There is a size difference. It's bigger at the horizon. And that is an optical thing because of the curvature of the Earth. Right? So it certainly isn't smaller. So if it's bigger, that completely, which is in fact, throws that argument out. You know, the sun, we see the sun set. That is only possible because the Earth is round. Otherwise, someone in America would be seeing it set and it would be burning the hell out of Europe. Not that that's the right direction to look. That's the opposite direction to look. Um, you know, I think part of this is it's difficult for people to visualise um, the, the Earth going round the Sun and the Moon going round the Earth. And, and working it all out from what we see, we see things go across the sky like this. And, um, you know, I said to my friend earlier, who didn't want to film, by the way, you know, if we were to draw a scale picture of the sun and the earth and stuff, you know, we'd need a really, really long piece of paper to draw it to scale. You know, you've got, to, you've got to think, in the scale of the size of the orbits, the planet is very small, even the sun is small when you think about the, the size of the orbits. And so, you know, the moon can pass in front of the earth, lots of the sun's here, lots of times, and then on the odd occasion it gets in the way and we have an eclipse. And the same when the moon's around the back side, it can do it lots of times without the earth getting in the way, but every now and then the earth gets in the way and you have a blood moon. So I think that helps. And I think it's a good to, thing to practice actually. Um, I mean I've been doing it quite a lot, is just imagining in your head how how it works and I've done a video a few videos back saying how the earth orbits the sun uh, to explain the seasons and things like that and the speed in which the length of day changes and I think that's quite interesting and yeah here's, here's an argument I heard old D Murphy <laughs> say um, he was saying about the pole star how during the night if you, in the northern hemisphere, you know, if you took a picture during the night, you see the pole star stay still and all the other stars spin around it. And he said something like, if the earth was orbiting the sun, you'd see the pole star, you'd see all the stars move as it's orbiting the sun. Well, no. You know, in the interview, didn't say anything. So, I mean, so... The stars are very, very far away, like light years away. Now, the size of the orbit of the Earth compared to how far away the stars are is tiny. You're not going to see the stars move. But as the Earth spins around, of course the stars are going to move because you're changing your direction. It's like if I move my head this way, and look, say at the end of the room, you know, it doesn't doesn't look very different. It looks pretty much the same. But if I do this, keep my eyes forward, then <laughs> it changes a lot. So, may not have explained that one so well. Um, what are the other questions they tend to ask? Or well, these are the things the flat earthers are saying. You see to that the things that are difficult to explain, you know, these are the things they're coming out with and saying, see, the Earth's flat, and got a glass bowl, you know, just like it says in the Bible and the firmament. Even though that word shouldn't be firmament, it should be vault. Well, it is in my perfectly translated Bible. <laughs> <coughs> All right, what was it Peter Charo just asked? Um, 
Oh no, you just said about unprovable things like outer space. Can we get to the moon in a rocket ship? <clears throat> well, the rocket ship can get there, but we'd get radiation poisoning. And we're outside the Van Allen belts. Right, what else did they say? And I really was reluctant to... I didn't want to make a video of Flat Earth. I, I thought I could avoid it. And I thought the Tesla launch would put an end to it, but clearly has not. So that's why I think it's there's hypnotism going on. I'm, I don't just think it. I'm positive. So if you're not hearing the answers to the questions and then coming back with the same questions, it's not... Um, It's not very good. It's so how to dehypnotize? Well, you have to become aware of it. Become aware that s s there's something that's turning you off. And because I haven't been hypnotized by this flat earth thing, I stopped watching that video. I thought it was dodgy. The guy was just blabbering on and on and on and on. Which is why you think maybe I've been doing, but hopefully not. Hopefully not. So, but, yes. And what else, come on, what else do the Flat Earthers say? Oh, I can't be bothered. They, oh yeah, like, the perspective thing. Like, they seem to sort of uh, say you can see miles and miles and miles and it's just flat, but... You know, you got you got to consider how big the Earth is. It is huge. I mean... I mean, here's Great Britain. You can see that. You know, it take me like days to walk across that. Days. You know, an aeroplane flying across there would take an hour. Just sitting in an aeroplane going 600 miles an hour would take an hour. How curved is that? Does that look very curved? Even from this scale, it's not curved if you're just looking at a tiny little spot. And if... I, what's the width of the Earth? I keep forgetting. Because they measure it in kilometres. Alright, let's just say 10,000 miles wide. Sorry, I, I know that's incorrect, right? Now, if you wanted a good picture from the Earth... Like, here I am with the video camera. This is this big, right? And I'm more than that away with the video camera. Can you see the whole thing? I doubt it. So even with a wide angle lens, you know, how far are you going to have to come off the earth to get a decent picture of its curvature? Like, a plane flies at a mile high. So if this is 10,000 miles in diameter, or whatever it is, a mile is going to be like a tiny little millimetre. Right? And sat at the end of the atmosphere is eight miles high again. You know, it's just minuscule. You know, you've got to get out here. Right? Which is outside of the Van Allen belts. So it'll have to be an unmanned one. You know, before you can get a picture of the Earth. You know, NASA are lying gits. They are. I mean, that is, again, true. So, not everything is untrue. You know, I think, part of this, I think we've been at war. We've been at war for a long time, I think. I'm thinking 1984. Honestly. I, I get, I'm getting that feeling that. We've been at war since 1984. <laughs> it's a 
sing that song. That's when Tomorrow's World ended. That's when they started getting secretive about everything and everything was getting... Well, they could foresee, you know, that there's going to be resource issues in the future and maybe they thought they could get them from space and they found out they're not allowed. Mr. Alien came and visited um, Eisenhower, I think, 1950. Probably let them know, but they've chosen to keep it secret from people. Yeah. So, Flat Earth, you know. Maybe it's, I mean, it's all, if it's all part of God's plan. Watch it unravel. God moves in mysterious ways. So uh, let's not argue about it. Um, but the earth is <laughs> spherical. And there's a huge, beautiful universe out there. That in future we're going to get to explore it. And don't, not just the physical bodies. We will be exploring, learning our souls. It sounds too much like our souls, doesn't it? Our souls. Us. It's us. It's what we are. Well, and if you watched my last video, very interesting what we are. <laughs> oh dear. No. I'm prattling on. That'll do it. I'm not going to talk about flat earth anymore. So dehypnotize yourself. But, you know, you're right. You know, this is just one realm, one dimension of it. Go into the soul dimension. That is the dominant di dimension. That's where we're really going to create. But I'm sure we'll still be using this universe and this earth for a long time to come. So, bon voyage.